Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at the Buddy Pole Power Mini. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so up until uh, about three, maybe four weeks ago, I had been running a single lithium iron phosphate battery, and I had been using the Genesun charge controller to manage that battery when uh, I was out and about, either to pull power off of it or to uh, use the solar panel to charge the battery. Then, uh, over the last month, I've acquired three different lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I'm kind of looking to make my kits more modular. So one of the problems that I had with this particular charge controller, and guys, let me say, this is a great charge controller. I got no issues with it, but it's lacking a few things. First of all, uh, I had to add the power cables or the, the cables coming in and out of it and put the power poles on it. Um, that makes it a little bit more bulky. And then the only thing it has on it as far as uh, visual input that you can see is this one single LED light. Now, it does several different uh, flashing patterns to let you know what's going on but you're just a bit limited with this. Great charge controller, but I was looking for something that would give me a bit more information. Enter the Buddy Pole Power Mini. Now, this is a cool little device because it handles several things for us. First of all, and I'll go in and bring you guys in a little closer in a minute. We've got a nice screen right on the front that gives us two different meters. One for uh, what the battery is doing and the other meter handles what the solar panel is doing. Uh, in addition to that, we've got several different ports. And the nice thing about these, it's already designed for ham radio operators. Everything is power pulled. Well, everything excluding the USB port, and we don't want that power pulled. But on this side, we've got uh, one power pole connector for the battery. We've got one for solar, and we do have this USB right here in the center. On the other side, we have two additional power poles, uh, and these are marked load one and load two, so we can power at least two different devices with this, uh, in essence, splitting the power off of our battery to cover two different uh, devices, and we don't even have to make up a special cable to do it. We can do it with just this little device. So it's uh, very small. I'll get some exact dimensions and overlay that onto the screen. It's just slightly bigger though than the Raspberry Pi, and it's roughly about the same thickness. So let me bring you guys in a little bit closer and show you a few of the features on screen here. Okay, so let's take a bit of a closer look at the Power Mini. Now, you can see right on the screen uh, what I was talking about with the dual built-in meters. On the left-hand side, you've got the battery, and on the right-hand side, you've got the solar input, what's coming out of the solar panel. Now, currently, I've just got this connected up to my BioNO 3 amp hour battery for this uh, little demonstration and I don't have a load connected to it at all. If I did it would also give us uh, the amp hours that we've used out of the battery going to the load. But this is one of the really really cool features uh, about the Power Mini and one of the reasons that I wanted to move to this device. Now we can also cycle through different screens here. This is a system report and this will tell us how much, uh, how long the system has been up. It's going to give us solar power, how much we've, uh, you know, gathered sunlight and converted to solar. Right now that's reading at 6.6 uh, .6 watts. And uh, gives us a solar peak and then it tells us how much of the battery we've used. So we've put uh, 0.4 amp hours into this battery right now. 
The next screen gives us uh, some of the settings that we're using for the system. And this is really to select what type of battery you want to use. So I'm going to press and hold the select button for a second, and that will highlight uh, the battery type right there. Let's just go ahead and cycle through those. Uh, it's got two lithium iron phosphate battery choices there. Uh, the one that we use is the one that has a max charge voltage of 14.4 volts. Uh, but there is another one here that has a max charge voltage of 10.8. It will also do lithium polymer. So this is a battery that you might find in like the Yezu 817. I run a wind camp battery in that particular radio and it's a lithium polymer battery. So I can, uh, as long as I change and set the power mini up correctly, not only can I charge the lithium iron phosphate battery, but I could also recharge the lithium polymer battery that's in the 817. And then if you still run lead acid batteries, this thing will also charge the older SLA technology. In addition to that, we can modify some of the parameters. Uh, so the max charge voltage, the low voltage trip, and the low voltage reset. And this can help us, maybe we forget and leave the battery uh, plugged up. Uh, we might not want the BMS to take it out. We might want to trip the voltage prior to what the BMS in the actual battery is set to. If you're using SLA batteries that have no battery management system in it, this can prevent you from over discharging an SLA type battery. So we've got several different settings there that we can use. The next screen is a few more settings. Uh, so we can turn an auto off to enabled or disabled so that if it gets a low voltage or a high voltage uh, alarm, then we can go ahead and automatically shut this thing down. And uh, we've got an audible alarm that I do keep turned on. Right now I've got the auto off disabled because I'm using this in another test and I don't want the power mini to uh, trip before the battery, uh, the BMS in the battery does. So I do have auto off disabled currently. When I'm in the field, I will have that enabled. Uh, the audible alarm will sound once we get to a low voltage condition. And then we can set the high voltage trip and the high voltage reset on this screen as well. And that's it. We're back to the primary screen here. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's a look at the Power Mini. This is going to be what I'm moving to going forward. It just allows me to swap batteries in and out super quick, and it's easy to move this from GoKit to GoKit, uh, whether I'm working with the QRP kit or my full QRO kit. What am I going to do with the Ginnison charge controller? Well, I'm probably going to use it in another project. I've got another one uh, in mind, so maybe we can do that build uh, somewhere in the near future and bring that to you guys here on the channel. All right, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.